Welcome to Sexology, a podcast that untangles the science of sex and pleasure. And now, with this week's episode, your host, clinical psychologist, Dr. Nazanin Moali. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Sexology Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Nazanin Moali. Today, we're going to talk about dating in France and how is it different in America and what are some of the tips that we can learn from French as far as becoming better lovers. This is part of our dating series. And if you haven't downloaded our guide on reducing your dating anxiety, make sure you're heading to our show notes and downloading the guide. I know for many people starting dating after COVID or overall dating has been stressful and anxiety provoking. So if you want to make sure that you are investing in your wellness, so you're showing up as the best version of you during your dates, I have some tips that I share with you and the checklist. And I, these are the tips I share with my clients about it to manage dating anxiety. Our guest is Guy Blaise. He's the author and Frenchman currently live in America. He lived in Eastern France and Paris, where he witnessed the dating experience of the strong women in his family and listened closely to the advice his grandmother routinely gave them about love. After two decades of living in America and struck by the differences between two cultures' approaches to romance and sex, he started writing books, offering his insight, and started the French Perspective blog. In this episode, we're going to talk about some of the cultural differences. We're going to talk about the story of unsolicited dick pic that many women receive. And if you're a man and you're thinking about when to send it, we have some answers for you. We're going to talk about how you can become a better lover and what to do and what's wrong and what's okay about dating an alpha male. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Guy Blazer. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sexology Podcast. It's my honor to have Guy Blaze on our show. Guy, welcome to our show. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, like we say in French, may the guide of uh, sexuality be with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's a wonderful saying. You know, I was sharing with you before we started recording how much I enjoyed your book. You were generous. Yeah. I sent me a copy and I was like, okay, let me look at it while I was at doctor's office waiting. And I was like, oh, this yeah. is so great. <laughs> so I'm glad that you joined us here. And I know in the book, you're talking about that you're you're sharing the, your perspective as someone who grew up in France and the French person, but we're not necessarily generalizing saying that this is how everyone in France is having like exactly. making love Everybody's like different. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Everyone's different. I, you know, I don't like it when they say, oh, how are Iranian women in bed? I was like, I don't know. I I, I can tell you about myself, but I, I'm not representative of the whole nation. So uh, I started with that caveat. So let's start with kind of getting to some of the great content that, that was in your book. So tell okay. us, what are some of the biggest differences between dating in France and in America? America. Well, the difference, I mean, it's a difference is very obvious, uh, especially uh, when you leave France for the first time and you land in America. Well, the difference is just uh, when you see American dating, it's just uh, so many differences in a way that uh, American approach, even a, a man approach a woman. And uh, in France also, but you can see that American women are more open, very easy, easy to approach them, easy to talk to. In France, uh, women are more really careful. They don't open up very easily. So they have to warm up for a while until they, until they know you and then they can open up a little bit. Yeah. So the difference is uh, also in a way uh, we uh, do things. You know, when you go out for a date uh, with a woman in France, it's like a structure. You know, the things that you know what you should not do. The things that you cannot say, you have to be very careful. But here in America, it's like uh, everybody's so relaxed, uh, you know, and uh, men get away with so many things too, huh? uh, that in France is a uh, no, 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 you should not do that. Uh, you, you take a woman to a restaurant, uh, you don't even ask a question, are we going to share, you know, the... No, you, you pay, you demand. <laughs> it's just it's expected in France. But here, 
sometimes a man would say, you know, I wish I, you know, it's embarrassing. <laughs> well, I think it was interesting that you, so you're saying that men have to work to earn their affection. Is, is that the dynamic? Is that the difference between a French woman and an American woman? Again, super generalizing, but I'm kind of curious about your first remark. Yeah, the, the, in France, you have to court a woman. You have to show that you're interested. You have to work for it. You have to show that really you have earned your attention. But here, I mean, it's 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 different. I mean, just men just get it so easy. That how I see it. Women don't challenge men enough. I will tell you my personal experience that uh, after two dates, it's enough uh, for a woman here to be willing even to do more than. But in France, you have to work for the cookie. I'm sorry, I made a cookie, the pussy. So it's just the way we speak yeah so you work for it you sweat and you earn it but here if you get it so easy you don't respect it and uh, so yeah that's how i see it. Well, i can see pros and cons of both right because i feel like if you work for it then you as you said you you will value it more but i think yeah. then if you're not into courting then there, then maybe if you just only want to get casual sex here like you know if you're showing the openness so that that can make it easier but i'm curious what are some of the things that are american quote unquote air quote american men are getting they, they're able to say here that wouldn't be acceptable in France when it comes well, to dating. Well, well, for example, as you see, uh, for a foreigner coming from France, everything of a romance, right? romance, in a man's point of view in America is go to a restaurant, have food. But there are so many things to do than eating. You can go to the park, you can do exercise together, you can go to the museum, you can go to the movie, you can go to, you know, hiking, so many things. But man here is, okay, I take you out once, twice, I deserve the sex. Once I get the sex, that's it. That's my mission accomplished. Well, if you work for something, that applies in anything in life. If you work hard, you save money to buy a beautiful car, you will probably take care of your car. Well, it's applying even a relationship with you. If you chase a woman, would really give you the, you know, have to earn, you will respect her more. Okay? That's just logical, yeah. Well, I agree with that. <laughs> well, as a woman, of course, we love courting. So that's that's good to hear that that's something that just French women get a lot of it's it. It's very, very it's fantastic to chase a woman and suffer a little bit. Yeah, courting is this. You need to show to her that you're really interested. Write notes, uh, call, uh, don't keep a real communication just through text messages. I mean, that's just annoying. Write letters, leave her a note, uh, call, you know, yeah. Well, I think that those things can go a long way when you're showing your interest, when you're putting an effort in, in writing, talking about it with your partner. I think that can be a very beautiful thing. And that can make sex also exciting, right? When and you are building an organization. Right. Doing things together, it's uh, very important. It's just you not know, like being behind the screen of a computer or texting, and, uh, and that's it. That's not enough. Well, I think with that, it requires some effort, right? That you can do yeah. it for fewer people. I feel like right now we live in a time that people feel like there's plenty of fish in the sea. So I'm courting or like uh, pursuing 20 different women. <laughs> so I don't yeah, have yeah. time to do that. So I think that's exactly. part of the problem. Yeah, internet really have a facilitate everything, good and bad. You just swap in left or right, you get sex. So, or, or what's the difference be between going to a grocery store where you can just pick it, you know, and everything is disposable. So it, in a relationship, it becomes the same thing. Men swap left to right, or if it doesn't work the next day, people say, well, yeah, you know, I will never go back with dating site. After two months, you go back, let me go check what who left me a message. It becomes <laughs> an addiction, <laughs> you know, and you repeat it. Uh, you may easily uh, date five women or five men in, in one year. <laughs> yeah, That is true. Any other differences that we haven't talked about? Well, the difference also, also between uh, the, the French, also so it's uh, the mentality. I think uh, American men not showing so much who they are. They hold everything. It's like very, very, the Frenchmen more emotional. Uh, and when, when, when they want a woman, I mean, the French will say it loudly. For American men, it's like they can never express themselves very well. I think that's the big complaint that I think I see among the people around here that they expect a woman to read their mind, their intention, plan everything. But you are the one who's courting a woman. So it would be nice that you plan the movie, you plan the things, and you say, hey, let's go see the movie. Hey, let's do this. But it just don't sit like you are. 
you know, the king of England. You, you have to work, you know. <laughs> well, sorry for the king, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Love that. I, I, I agree with you that I feel like we need to take more risks when it comes to dating. We want to show ourselves our vulnerability. And, uh, so if we're playing playing it super safe and we're cautious, then yeah. we'll, we, won't, we won't be different than the next person. So I think we wouldn't give the relationship, the person, the chance to see us. Yeah, and I noticed also that uh, the more the woman is very cautious, the man will not last. If you don't give the cookie in three dates, they run away. <laughs> well, if you think about like, what you're doing, I mean, you have to be patient. If he has to be seven, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dates, you mean what you want, you will go for it. But here, right, yeah, after first date, second, if the sex doesn't come, well, the man just turn the page. <laughs> And go look somewhere else. <laughs> well, I, I feel like after this, everyone want to date a Frenchman. <laughs> no, but, no, but, no, that does not make the French perfect, but I think the French also have a unique way. Uh, that's the difference between the French and the Italian, uh, the, the Greek and uh, others, just, just being French. Yeah. Who do you easy. think date better, French or Italian? Oh, the French. <laughs> Why would you say that? Well, because the Italian are the cousin of the British, just bad, bad lovers. So, <laughs> sorry, being a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry about it. <laughs> well, you know, I was reading your book, and, and I know on the first inquiry that I know that the, for our listeners that haven't purchased the book yet, so people have sent you their questions and you're answering their questions. And I, and I know the first question was about the woman was asking about unsolicited dick pics. And yes. I, that was a question that was on my mind forever. I was like, oh, he gets yeah. it. Because I yeah. really didn't get the concept of if someone is not asking for it and you're yeah. not, I understand sometimes people send dick pics because it's a form of aggression. That's different. Yeah. But I yeah. feel like yeah. in dating scenes, people are not pacing it right. So tell us more about that. What's happening there? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, but like, uh, it's men are men, okay? French men, American men, we are men, we have some, some behavior. Well, and solicited uh, big pictures, they happen in France too. But, you know, the common things that the French women do when they get such a picture, they take a knife and take a banana, put a knife on a banana and send you back a picture. Well, I, get, I guarantee you that all the men will get chills when you see a banana with a paint, you know, it's not a knife. Oh, you, you feel it. But in America, men send it. Well, I think it's a statement to think that usually it's about the size. Well, in America, bigger is better, that assumption. But that's not necessarily true. So if I have a six or each inch or seven, blah, 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 so that's a statement. But that does not guarantee nothing. Bigger does not necessarily better. I mean, according to women, what I hear. If uh, if God gave you a 12 inches stick, but if we forgot to give you the manual, you are useless. Simple. <laughs> Love that. I agree with you that I feel like men are misguided about what makes sex good. And yeah. it's more about your skill as a lover than the size of your penis. You're right. If you don't know how to use it, then that, that would be actually a tool for torture. So I think yeah, that yeah, can simple, be useful. Simple rope, nothing. You can, if you can use it while, well, but that's why it's important to listen to women. Women, what do women say? But obsession about the size, I mean, just that's, I don't know if it's a lack of a sex education in America, but men need to listen and pay attention to what the women say. <laughs> right. And I feel like in your book, you were talking about the timing of it, right? Like if it's part of the kind of like sex thing you're doing with your partner, that could be hot yeah. and exciting. But yeah. nothing can kill the kind of kill the sexual sex drive of a woman when she gets unsolicited dick pic, because the message is, is that you're not you're not good at reading the situation, you're not good at consent, so you're sending exactly. something and you're not safe. So I think that's and not necessarily. And you are also only interested in sex. Well, a woman is the whole, is the mind, everything. So if you focus only on sex, well, you are a tourist. You just come in <laughs> and then you take off. So no. So that's exactly the message that the women need to look at. Uh, that no, if, if it's all is about my boobs and this, and then it's all the body part and everything, but then what after that? Exactly. Yeah. So tell us, how does Frenchmen make love to women? Again, like super broad, but I'm kind of curious. Yeah. So sex is uh, it's art. Huh? Sex is uh, it's not something that I think people don't even realize, especially men, that sex starts eight hours before actually the physical. 
if you know you want your sex tomorrow night, but start being at your best behavior, don't piss it off, uh, and then you want sex the next hour, it won't work. Ha. Also, the effort of a man to understand what the physical need of a woman. A woman is, I just said, we men, we are ready for sex anytime. Women are not. So I always picture it like a oven. If you want to make a, you know, make a pizza or cook a pizza, you have to warm the, you turn the oven, you preheat. Same thing, same concept to woman. She may, the preheat may take 20, 30 minutes, be patient. So that's what uh, the mentality of the French are, especially in sexuality, is to, to prepare your woman the first time in the morning, you leave her a note. Some people leave her, send her flowers or nice work. Come home, if she's still at work, do your chore. If you have to run the dishwasher, do it. Vacuum your living room, do everything to make her less stressed. I guarantee you that you have a great that's just a logic. And I love yeah. that you brought it up. And you know, when, when I talk about that with my clients, they think about, oh, should I clean the kitchen to get sex? But what they're missing, it's not about how spotless the kitchen is, right? It's about yeah. showing that I care for you. I'm anticipating your effort and your needs, and I'm putting an effort showing I love you. And I think that's the missing part at times for people. Exactly. And also, love does not have a holiday. It's 365 days a year. So don't just do it with because you want sex. You have to do it constantly to, to show to your partner that you care and that, that uh, I don't like the role in a relationship that, oh, I'm a man, I, I can only do certain things. Uh, you're a woman, you have to be the one cooking. That's not true about the best cook in the world are men, right? To the French restaurant, you go, men are the cooks. So <laughs> there's no argument that, that men cannot cook. So, oh, folder, you know, single men can do their own laundry. It's just uh, something that men need to pay more attention to what the women need if they want great sex. I'm smiling because a friend of mine, she loves France and she's been traveling a lot. And after a really bad breakup, she, she went to France and she hooked up with this Frenchman who was lovely. And apparently he did all of this wonderful thing of like preparing perfect dinner for her. And they had this like wonderful sex sexual experiences apparently they they made love to this song uh, like the music of Sergio and uh, Jane Birkin okay. <laughs> and it was playing for days in our car I was like oh god I cannot get it in, get, get it out of my head but it seems like for many women that's a missing piece seeing the yeah. partner is putting an effort really kind of anticipating their needs what you're talking about setting the mood and I'm not saying that it's only a man's responsibility right like at times no, it's a no. dance that you're doing with your partner yeah. But I think yeah. if you're putting effort for your part, that can go a long way. In France, men men don't have a, no afraid to show their emotions. Express, no problem. That does not make you less man, you know. It's it's all about proving or showing to your partner that you care. And that's very important. But don't do it just because you need sex. You have to do it every day. And I guarantee you get a good relation with your partner. Amen to that. So, you know, one of the questions that people send in your book, I thought was very interesting that I was thinking we can talk about it here as well, if that's okay with you. Yes. So someone wrote, I'm drawn to alpha males and dominations, but sometimes I wonder if dating men with less intensity would make relationships easier. Would you agree? And I get this question on a monthly basis from my clients. So what do you think about that? I don't agree with us that because it's like wearing shoes. You know, everybody got their own size. If you wear the wrong suit, uh, you will you you will walk white. <laughs> Same thing. Some people have uh, the taste for alpha, but they can't experiment someone who's no alpha because it won't work. It may say for a change, it may work for a few months, but at the end, that's that's not really you're not feeling in a relationship. So I think uh, I think uh, they are good alpha who can stand and do well, and also with a good intention, good men, but alpha, you know. So I'm afraid that uh, some people will experiment uh, for something that they really don't need or want, and in the long run. They cannot be happy. It's the same thing applied with sexuality. I always wonder if some of the people ask me a question, uh, why would you marry a man if sex is already bad from the beginning? 
Right, so. right. And, you know, I agree with you. I feel that sometimes people know so, like that particular relationship didn't work out for them or they were heartbroken and then they push themselves to go toward yeah. like something opposite that like if they like someone kind of be more kind of do- kind of being a dominant in bedroom, they go for someone that's more submissive and it might yeah. work short term, but long term, it's not feeding their needs and it caused yeah. all sorts of issues. But I think it's also important to learn from our mistakes. So I think it's important to know what's what are some of the things about that specific relationship that didn't work out for you? What what was it about the disrespect? Was it about your needs are not getting met and communicating that with your partner? Exactly. And and every experience is different. And every people, I mean, every breakup have something you learn from it. And for people who think you have to make some adjustment, you know. And uh, the choice of what you want, it's very important for everybody, women, including men. So how you can reach halfway or what can be acceptable or minimize because there's no perfect relationship no, it's impossible but where can you be say okay 80 percent is good 20 percent bad that's good good score 90 percent <laughs> good 10 percent bad that's that's good but perfect relationship no way it's impossible <laughs> absolutely that's an illusion and i think i go adding to what you said that sometimes a relationship could be at 90 and sometimes the relationship the same relationship in some season of the relationship could be 70. it's just a matter yeah. of kind of seeing what's happening and addressing the issue but I agree with you that we need to learn from our past. So if we yeah. if we happen to get stuck in the same kind of cycle of the same sexual experiences and dating experiences that's not serving us, we mm-hmm. are the common factor in all of them. <laughs> we exactly. have to see what we're not doing, what we're doing, and not doing. That's not working. Exactly, a relationship is like uh, the weather. The weather, you know, one day it's sunny, the next day it's rainy. Uh, so they they up and down. But I think at the end, if your foundation, the relationship is strong, you will survive everything: the sunny, the heat, the, the rain. Uh, voila. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, the last question is about how, for non-French people, how can they become a better lover? Do you have any tips for us, for men and well, women? Well, for you, yes. I would say, well, first of all, to the American women that I adore very much and really love American women because of their openness. They're very open and they're beautiful and uh, be more demanding before sex, during sex, after sex. Uh, it's very important that if you make a bad choice from the beginning, bad, you tolerate bad behavior, uh, you basically encourage a man to keep doing the same. So in sexuality, in uh, helping, chores, responsibility, better lover, a man who loves have to think, anticipate. Don't wait to be asked. Think, what can make my partner? Because it's all about love. Love is, you know, what can I do for you to make your life easier? That's love. Don't be asked. Just don't sit and wait to be asked. Oh, can you take the trash out? Can you do No, that you share the same space. For men, it's the mindset to think. Be proactive in showing your love, your respect. Uh, I guarantee you that all the men who are listening need to know that that's the way to have the greatest sex you can imagine because everything in a woman is mental. Once the mental is okay, sex will be great, fluid, like we say in French. So that's very important. I, I agree with you. I think, again, setting the context, especially for women, the context is really important to kind of making sure you are in the right context. Of course, again, I always say, like, as a woman, you have to take agency of as you said, asking for what you want and also making sure that you are, you are creating that context as well. But yeah. it, it's a dance you're creating. And I, what I'm hearing you're saying that to know your value. So you're just know don't your compromise. And don't, don't hesitate to say what you have to say. Because at the end of the day, we are men. Was the moment the penis enter the vagina, you are equal. That's it. So you have to say what you have to say. If the sex is not good, just say it. the French woman will not hesitate to tell you you are bad here you need to improve but in America women start to think oh if I say it I'm going to hurt his feeling but how can he better himself if he's a bad lover you need to teach him. tell him you need to educate yourself in France it's, it's no rare for men like me I listen I watch the woman show on TV in the radio they give so many tips to men how to be better lover not only on sexuality but everything but men need to make an effort in America 
to, to improve the, the relationship with the partner. That's the and, key. And I agree with you, like listening to your lover is important because I feel everyone's really? body is different. And if we are the stigmatizing conversation about sex, then people yeah. can be able to give a helpful feedback then the other partner can understand it better and everyone will be happier because the sexual experiences would be more frequent and more pleasant. Exactly. And America is no theocracy. Huh? So don't be afraid to speak up. Uh, God is not watching. Just speak. Sex is sex. And don't be ashamed to be just uh, sex is only the talk is in the bedroom. You can talk sex in the living room, in a, in a car. And that's what makes romance even more uh, appealing, uh, very exciting. Well, Guy, thank you so much for all of these wonderful tips. And to our listeners that you had, like they're curious to learn more about your your work. That again, I love the book because it was filled with like questions that many women have and you have such a unique perspective. So if people <laughs> want to get the book, they want to get to know your work, where are some of the places that you can find you? So my uh, book is uh, Love Like the French. And uh, my other book is uh, Vive la Différence, which is uh, a Frenchman perspective on American woman. So they can find the book uh, on my blog, thefrenchperspective.com, on Amazon, on Barnum Noble. And uh, yes, so the book is uh, are available there. Perfect, perfect. The link will be in the show notes. So if people get a chance to write the address of your blog, again, I loved your book. And thank you so much for coming on our show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, like I said from the beginning, may God, uh, the God of sexuality, be with uh, all your listeners and yourself. Wonderful. The best wish. <laughs> <laughs> Merci. I hope you guys enjoyed our conversation. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, it's not like all French people are having same kind of style of lovemaking, but I think it's important to learn from different cultures and see what's working for people. And I always tell all of my clients to know your worth and demand that the partner and the person you're having sex with is honoring those boundaries and your needs. It, it doesn't mean that you have to be in a relationship to be respected, but even if you're having casual sexual experiences, it's okay to ask for what you need and be open and honest about what's happening in the bedroom. If you have been listening to this show, I would really appreciate it if you take a minute and give us a review in Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you're listening to this show. Your feedback is really important for me. I read every single review and feedback that people send me and it helps us to reach a broader audience. I'll talk to you guys next Tuesday. Thanks for listening to the Sexology Podcast. For more great content, visit www.sexologypodcast.com. Please be advised that information presented on this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health provider.